It's 7 o'clock, so I'm going to call the UHS number 6 meeting to order for Monday, November 19th. Um, and as we look at the agenda, the first thing on our agenda is a possible executive session for discipline hearing that is not happening, but we will have a, um, a brief executive session at the end of the meeting tonight. So we'll do that then. Um, and let's move to the clerk's report. And is there a motion to approve the minutes of, I think it's supposed to say November 5th, meeting not on, the, on my agenda it says October 15th but I think they mean I think it meant the November 5th minutes because those were distributed yes everybody got those yes okay so is there a motion I move that we approve the meeting the minutes of the meeting November 5th 2018 we'll second moved and seconded all right is there any additions deletions corrections that we need to make to those minutes all right seeing none all those in favor aye, aye. aye. Opposed or abstentions? No, excellent. Um, communications, do any board members have communications this evening? Yes, Sean. Um, I received uh, an email from Elizabeth uh, concerning the Latin. Uh, so I think Russ and I both got that email. Yep. Um, and so I said that I actually have a copy of what she wrote. Um, anybody's interested in it. But anyway, I wanted to bring it up um, and then where it goes from there, whether it goes to finance or planning policy or, I mean, TCC, uh, whatever. Yeah, I mean, I think it may be, it's the, maybe the next next step is to, is to schedule it before the, the TCC, because I know you wanted, uh, wanted some time to prepare for it. So we're not going to talk about it tonight, but um, we should schedule um, Steve, we should figure out a time to um, before our next meeting, maybe to to get the uh, to have a TCC meeting and and, uh, and talk about that. And so that would be a time when, when you could present to us. And I think that was in fact your suggestion as well. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. didn't know what the protocol was. Yeah, if we went, we started with TCC, right? That's what I thought. Yeah, no, no, I appreciate it. And I wasn't exactly sure what the protocol was, too. And I, and I, I sent an email to, to Ricky to, figure, to help figure that out because budget season is starting. And if we're talking about next year, it's a good time to, to do that. Okay. So, um, so you guys will figure out a, a TCC meeting? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Before the next meeting. Well, what is that time frame as far as being able to even accurately discuss it, to even have a, a, a an outside chance of getting it into this year's budget or discussion thereof. I mean, well, Wednesday I present the <coughs> UHS budget to the mm -hmm. finance committee. Mm -hmm. Thursday, um, Wednesday. 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 I got an email saying it was changed. Yeah. It was changed from Thursday to Wednesday okay. because of the holiday. Okay. Yeah. Um, so there, but the board doesn't approve the budget until. 17th, I yeah, 17th of December, yeah. So we could meet between, you know, between my presentation on Wednesday. Okay. And um, I mean, often we meet just before these meetings, but I don't know if that, that would give us enough time to do that or not. I mean, that would be um, the 3rd of December, if I'm right on yeah. that. So would that be would that be a, a That's fine. if we if we get sure. it like it's I think it's six. I'd, I'd rather do it sooner rather than later. Yeah, no, I was wondering if we should try to push it up, you know, next week instead. But um, the usual time is, is is and I can we can do it. I mean, we could do it, you know, maybe next Monday or uh, if my phone comes back. Um, and Mondays and Fridays are my my best day for meetings. But I think if December third, if we did, if you did a meeting okay. at six, the six December third at six, before this meeting, then they still have time to do any sort of sure. if anything, anything needed to change from Wednesday to the seventeenth, it's time to do that. Does that sound good? I think so. I mean, I'm curious what your question you were talking about. You know. I'm not sure your name. Russ. Sorry. No, I know Russ. Oh. Yes, I'm sorry. I was sure. pointing to, to, I was hey. the man to your oh, oh, right. Yeah, yeah um, you brought up like, is that, is the time, you know, do we have enough time? Because he's presenting, 
Right. But that's, I don't want to that's the draft. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's, there's, plenty, yeah. there's plenty of time. Yep. Because, yeah. I mean, just a reminder for budget stuff, and since everybody, people on the camera will see this too, but the 17th, the board would approve the budget. We would approve the budget to go to the voters on the 17th of December. And then it goes, that goes forward and until the meeting in February, really nothing's done, done until that meeting happens. So, but there would be plenty of time between December, December 3rd and December 17th if a recommendation needed to come forward to make a change. Can I just ask a question to have dealing with this, you know, Act 46 that we shall not be named? Um, because I, my understanding is that maybe the town meeting, I mean, things are changing. Will we be having a February meeting where BUHS, it's, where the voters approve it, or do we know that? Yet? We don't know that. Yet. So that, that would be the earliest, presumably. The right. earliest would be February, we, but likely if we're um, forced to merge, then it will be later okay. yeah. into the end of March. So that, that would be the soonest that it would go to the voters. Okay. Thanks. Okay. All right. So moving on to recognition of groups and individual visitors. Our, one, our visitor has been introduced, so <laughs> we're, we're good there. Um, so is there a motion to go into consent agenda? So moved. All right. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so let's start with finance, building, and transportation. Okay, finance is uh, in full, full flower, working on the budgets. We had a meeting um, on the 15th, and uh, we approved uh, some warrants to start off with. Numbers 1079 through 81, 83 through 87, 89 through 94. And the amount of two million two hundred twenty-eight thousand nine hundred sixty-eight dollars and twenty-six cents. In addition, we approved payrolls from October twelfth, five hundred twenty-two thousand six hundred three dollars and twenty-seven cents. October twenty-six payrolls five hundred twenty thousand eight hundred seventy-one dollars and thirty-seven cents. The main portion of business at this meeting was to review the uh, budgets for the career center and dams budget proposals, and we also spent some time uh, talking about the long-term capital plan and discussing the uh, methodology to move ahead uh, with a, uh, a study of the uh, feasibility study for Natowich Field turf possibility. Uh, our next meeting is actually this Wednesday at 8 o'clock in the central office on that's the 21st. All right, WSCSU Finance Committee. Okay, there have been two meetings. You covered the second one. I can and talk I about the 11-14 uh, uh, one. I, do you want me to, I, I can do the 11-7 uh, first. Yeah, yeah they, there was a meeting on uh, November 7th that um, uh, the, the, uh, a good portion was going over the um, special ed um, budget. And um, the uh, it, it's the largest portion of, of what's been um, uh, put in the, the supervisory union's responsibility. And the, the bottom line at the, at the uh, initial budget that we're, we're looking at um, went up just 1.86%, um, but you know, going from uh, 11 million, um, 587,000. Um, this year and budgeted for 11 million eight hundred thousand so up, up a little over two hundred thousand but the 1.86 percent increase um, compares to a, a budgeted I'm not sure we know exactly what the health insurance increase will be but it's budgeted I think at 10 percent at this point and salary increases at two and a half so costs have been been kept down in, in part uh, I think it was a, a speech pathologist position I think is is going unfilled? Is that it? So, um, and and uh, a little bit, you know, ups and downs with the um, out of placement uh, tuitions and those sorts of things. And, and one thing, I, I, a couple of things I'd like to note. One is the, is the the hard work that's going into it and the complexity uh, of of what's there. Um, one thing that that. Um, 
you know, a lot of the uh, variability in these budgets has to do with the out of out of uh, system tuitions and, and placements, and uh, the uh, union has been very good in terms of providing um, uh, services in the uh, in the school. So the, the tuitions have generally been going down over the years. But if you look in the budget, and if if anybody wants. A copy of this on the board. We can we can circulate. I've asked before if you want to see them, and, and there hasn't been a. Uh, if nobody has asked for those, but we can distribute these, um, so you, so you can see these. Um, but that one thing, looking at it, the the expenses are put in, uh, you know, school by school, district by district, and those can you know go up and down, particularly in the, in the smaller towns where a family moves in or out or moves from town to town and those sorts of things. And it's been maybe two or three years now that, you know, while there are budget budgetary implications, the budgetary implications are spread evenly among all the all the different boards. And so that um, the small towns don't see the huge variability. So it's it's just done on a on a pure population level, which is something that, that um, I know I've been pushing or, or looking for you know, uh, a dozen or more years ago trying to get that and, and that did come through and so we're we're seeing these things and so what the concentration was on was looking at you know what's needed and appropriate for these specific kids and not looking at oh my gosh but what's the implication on a particular town that may have some other budgetary stuff going on so the the focus can can be on the, on the on the student which is which is really nice um, so we so we went through um, went through that um, a, a very good presentation there. Then we uh, discussed a little bit the the superintendent contract, um, uh, which um, you know we'll we'll continue to look at, and eventually the SU board the SU finance committee will will make a recommendation, and the SU board will will ultimately um, uh, you know put that forward. Uh, also, we talked a, a little bit that, that was distributed the um, uh, superintendent job description, which I think what we'll, we're, we will do is to email that to. Yep. I was going to talk about it during my okay. report. Okay, yep. so I'll, I'll, I'll save that for, for your report. So that, that's going to And then there was a meeting um, the next week that I couldn't make, and Woody went to it. Unless there are questions about um, uh, special ed or. So I uh, <coughs> sat in for us at the uh, November 14th meeting, and that was basically one uh, significant piece of business, but one topic, and that was the SESU administrative and supportive instruction budgets. Um, it's difficult to um, throw out numbers, a percent increase, and so forth, because there's with a lot of things things get changed back and forth from SU to various other districts and uh, in this case uh, one thing that's moving into the SESU budget will be the diversity program and the addition of a half, uh, half FTE there and moving it into the supervisor union. Uh, another factor that impacts us is that uh, Guilford uh, bus uh, which was under Guilford the transportation is now being moved into SESU so there's some numbers that uh, would make it seem like there's a big increase but that's not really the case uh, and also reminding you that um, a lot of these are, are covered by uh, state assistance and so forth too so um, we reviewed that budget and that will I assume go forth with the other special ed and whatever there's going to be one, one, at least one more meeting, um, the 29th, I believe that. Yeah, the 29th at 6 p.m. Yeah, I, have, I think yeah. it you, on the schedule it's changed. Dates. It was the 20th. Yeah, okay. the 20th. And that will be, uh, I'm not sure what the topic will be on that. You probably can come up with it faster than I can. Is it on the master yeah. schedule? Are you going to be able to attend that? Yeah. Because okay. yeah, it got pushed back to six o'clock, so I could I can get that. Um, yeah, on the master schedule it says the uh, the draft budget, but I'm not sure if we've gone through um, food, ser did food you, service. Food service. Did you go through next week? 
It will be next week. Okay. So food service. Food service. And then the, the schedule for, for board approval uh, is uh, on the 5th of December. We're, so we're going to move that to the 6th. I'll review all the dates. Oh, okay. Most of the dates have had to change. Okay. Great. Excellent. Thank you, gentlemen. Planning and policy. It's not met. Uh, teacher curriculum committee. It has not met, but we will two weeks from tonight. Excellent. AMS committee. Oh, it's not met. WRCC is not met. Okay, so that's it for consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve consent agenda as presented? So moved. Second. Is there a second it? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right, so let's move to administrative reports. Why don't we start with BAMS? <coughs> All right. Hi, everyone. Um, I want to report on a few events that have recently happened. Uh, we. I told you last meeting that we were um, doing uh, parent-teacher conferences and uh, those went um, very well from what I could tell. We, we did surveys with parents. I haven't been able to review those yet, but uh, felt uh, I had a generally good feeling from seeing parents as they left that, that um, it went pretty well, uh, well attended. Um, we had a concert on the 7th and uh, the the middle school band, chorus, jazz band, uh, all performed. Well, there's different bands, a seventh grade band, eighth grade band, seventh grade chorus, eighth grade chorus. They, they also uh, presented to us uh, during the day, that day, and uh, the, the music quality was really high. I was really impressed, and uh, kids worked hard, and uh, couldn't have been happier with, with the concert. Um, and kind of, um, Sort of tied to that, we had the District Music Festival. That was this weekend. Of course, Friday we had a snow day, which threw a wrinkle into it, and they had to condense it to Saturday. Um, but they auditioned in um, October. And uh, so we had quite a few core students. I'll list them here. Maria Carfora, <coughs> Lily Bingham, Kaya Burroughs, Kaya Colby. Katie Baker, Hope Abich, Parker Hubbard, Michaela Newton, Carlton Newton, Chloe Bell, Josh Curtis, and Miles Ackerman Hovis. And um, the band students, and I think this was jazz band actually, Evan Wagner, Genevieve Redmond, Ani Kusinen, Miles Belove, and Dorian Paquette. I don't, um, I thought that list of band members was the band, but it's actually, I think, jazz band. So I gotta double check that, whether I'm missing some students. Just jazz band for this one. <coughs> right. um, so uh, Team Draco and kind of last couple things going on. Team Draco went ice skating last week and uh, our teams do that frequently and enjoy it. Go to the um, Brattleboro, the uh, Memorial Park Woodington uh, Skating Park. Uh, so those are the major school events that have happened uh, today and tomorrow we'll do continue work with proficiency-based learning. Julian Egan helped prepare a bunch of work for our teachers today and tomorrow. And uh, last but not least coming up, we, after the break, we go just <coughs> Usually Mr. Dot and myself go up to, and maybe a couple of students usually go up to the Dover night, which is an informational session where school's set up in the Dover gym, and we try to encourage Dover families to consider BAMs. There's other schools up there, and they kind of set up little displays, and uh, we've had good success in um, students coming here. I don't think it's because of that event. <laughs> it's because we have good programs, and... Uh, but it's an opportunity for parents and kids to meet us and consider us. So, so that's it. Any questions? All right. Thanks. Okay. What would you do, student council? All right. Uh, so we have continued to work on our flag policy. Um, we met last week and continued to work on the criteria and stuff for that. We haven't. <coughs> got a final draft or a draft that's ready for you guys to look at yet. Um, 
we have also looked on what the committee, who will be on the committee. I will look at the criteria and assess if a flag is okay to hang up. And we want a diversity of people, so we'll have three people from each grade. Two of those will be voting members, probably, and one people, one will be an alternate. And we'll also have some faculty on the board, probably three or four. Um, and this is all tentative, though, because of course you guys have to review it. Um, we also met with the department heads to look at long block ACE, which would be a scheduling change for us. Um, There's some issues the department heads were concerned about, about kids having places to go during this time. Um, and so our next steps are to find uh, like teachers to run events or clubs to put on activities during this time that kids could go to. And we're working on a specific date next week to kick off our annual Feed the Thousands campaign. Uh, we do this every year and you know we obviously want to try to get as much food as we can for the food bank so we're going to try to make it a competition this year which we did last year and had a lot of success with against the grades so each grade will compete um, to see who can get the most food yeah. um, I also want to talk a little bit about our new members so we recently got a whole flood of a lot of freshmen and sophomores coming into student council which is really cool none of them are here right now um, but they'll be coming into meetings pretty soon, and uh, we're very some excited of them were about last, last week. Yeah, two, so, two some of them were ago. here um, two weeks ago, and we're very excited about these new members and um, all the new insights they can bring to our group. Yeah, that's that's what we got. Any questions? Thanks. All right, yeah, cool. Thanks so much. Let's go to the high school. Sure. So. Uh, I do want to acknowledge the work that student council has been doing this fall. You know, I've been the principal of the high school for a couple of years now, and um, in that experience, I've never had a student council that's been this active. And so I, I do want to kind of um, give them the kudos they deserve. They've been very active and, and working really hard um, on a whole host of issues. And so thank you for your uh, for your hard work this fall. Um, as Keith mentioned, we did have the uh, Connecticut Valley District Festival here. And I do want to acknowledge the hard work that Steve Rice and Elise Wadsworth and Riley Goodemo did because, you know, they were essentially, uh, I don't want to say robbed, but they were robbed of a day. And so they took what is a two-day festival and they did it in one day. And they put on a show at five o'clock on Saturday evening that was great. And um, so I, I just want to applaud them for their flexibility and ability to pull that together. And uh, as part of that, we ha also had three of our students selected to the All Eastern Band Festival. And so they'll be going to Pittsburgh later on this year. And they are Malcolm Toleno, Ari Essenfeld, and Jordan Roche. And it's a huge honor to be selected. And to have three students selected for that is just amazing. And it's a tribute to the work that we do uh, 712 and K-12 for their music department. <coughs> so. uh, last week, we had a school safety night for parents. And we had... Um, Members from Broward Police Department, Fire Department Rescue, and myself attend. Unfortunately, the presenters did outnumber the audience, mm -hmm. um, but uh, Mr. Woodworth was there uh, asking questions. And uh, you know, we, we were kind of curious as to why that happened, why the turnout was so low. We thought it was pretty well advertised. Um, you know, unfortunately, in some cases, with a topic like that, unless something's happening, it's hard to, to come out and, and examine it. So. Um, we will do it again later on in the spring. In January, we're hoping to do parent education on the topic of technology and cell phones and uh, look at cell phone use not just in school, but how are cell phones being used literally from, from dawn to dusk <coughs> and what do we do to help our um, students and children use cell phones effectively and use them responsibly. Um, we're working on getting a guest speaker to come in and we'll advertise that and let you know what that is. I'll send out a text. Um, all right. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow uh, we are welcoming home our German exchange students. Uh, they've been in Germany for two weeks, and they're coming back tomorrow uh, evening. Karen Sebastian has done a, her usual phenomenal job. She's kept me updated. They have they've had a couple of minor bumps along the way, but everybody is healthy. Everybody's going to make it home, and um, so our our thanks to Karen for doing that as well. This week, and I don't know, maybe you guys can tell me, uh, did the new report cards get home? Yes. Yes, there we go. <laughs> so, so the new format report cards went home. 
they not only include a numerical grade, they also include a student's progress on um, what we're calling critical performance indicators for each course that a student's taking and where they are in that. And um, you know, we, we did send out a short uh, single sheet kind of decoding process because it does look different. It actually looks a little bit more like an elementary report card than a traditional high school report card. And so if parents ask and say it's changed, it has. And um, so far, I haven't gotten any calls, but Jackson has his. So uh, when we come back from break, I'm going to be working a little bit with Kira Sora Hartigan to work on developing um, a permanent food pantry on site. And um, you know, we have a site selected. We're going to actually solicit some donations. And we're going to solicit some help from community businesses to kind of get that up and running. Um, there are some other high schools that do this, um, and there's some of our own elementary schools do it. So, you know, it's it's sobering to think that we need to do this. Um, <coughs> I may be coming to the board uh, with updates along the way um, as we begin to launch this. You know, one of our questions is how do we make sure it's accessible to students, and how do we make sure that it, it remains stocked? Um, but, you know, it's something that we're uh, dedicated to doing because. <coughs> You know, even with Feed the Thousands and other programs, you know, we have students who um, have food insecurity year-round. And if we can help alleviate that, we certainly want to. Along those same lines, I want to thank our counseling department. They've gone out of their way to solicit donations from our faculty to create um, Thanksgiving meals for families that need them. And I believe they, they've done eight meals this year, and they'll continue to do that. Um, but it's great to see our counseling department kind of pulling together and, and our faculty just kind of contributing. Um, I think they had all their contributions done within a few days, which is nice. Um, we did some in-service this morning, and today we actually did a little faculty-wide brainstorming about um, how would we improve culture at BOHS. That was a, a long process, uh, but pretty worthwhile. And you know, we took um, literally hundreds of suggestions and whittled them down to seven or eight that we, as a faculty we're going to get to look at after we finish our book reading this fall. And then in the afternoon we heard from this year's YATS class and what they've done is they've done a whole faculty and student survey where they've asked questions about um, questions such as, um, you know, the question might be, uh, I feel like I'm being, my report card reflects what I'm taught and have students answer that question, have teachers answer that question. And a whole series of, of questions like that, and they've identified areas where student responses and teacher responses diverge. And that's been very useful to look at. And they took us through a protocol today and then had us look at some of those responses and make comments on them. And that'll be an ongoing discussion with that class all year long. Uh, ben Lord has done a great job this year again with that class, and we continue to look forward to that. And other than that, thank you. And uh, that? Thanks. Yeah. Just a brief comment on the safety meeting. It was uh, would have been nice to have some more parents there, but I uh, had the occasion to talk with one of the parents who was there on the subsequent day, and um, he pointed out that uh, the meeting was something that really gave him some reassurance that we are ahead of the curve um, in terms of planning for crisis. And uh, that struck me too, uh, particularly the things that you don't, you don't think about who gets involved. It's not just the police and the fire department, it's the public, public works mm -hmm. department, uh, rescue is a huge host of people that get involved. And there's a plan in place that goes into extraordinary detail. Um, uh, and, and that was I, reassuring to me and, and also to this, this parent. So hopefully we can get the word out. To, more people. I know it's a, it's a topic that a lot of people probably don't want to talk about, um, but there is a, a positive side to the reassurance that it provides. We don't like to talk about it, but we talk about it um, monthly at our uh, WSCSU leadership meetings, and uh, Steve and I occasionally, Keith, can join us. Um, we meet uh, every probably six to eight weeks with first responders. We're always reviewing, updating, uh, and we count on first responders to keep us up to date with what is best practice in the field. Because we're educators, they're, they're, they know about safety. UHS 6 has 
drills quite often. We just had the hostile intruder drill again last week. That we did, so to keep the students abreast also. Okay. Excellent, thank you. Let's move to the career center. Sure, I'll start with parent conferences that we had on Thursday the 8th. Uh, I sent out a robocall to our other sending schools, and you know the Career Center besides students from BUHS. They also come from Twin Valley, Leland Gray, Hinsdale, or Bellows Falls. So I invited those parents in also, and I think it helped. We had a, a better turnout than usual for some of those sending school parents besides the BUHS parents. So that worked out pretty well. Uh, Kathleen Forrester, our health careers teacher, is in the process of finalizing the approval of our licensed nursing assistance program with the Vermont Board of Nursing. It's a long, tedious process that would be nice to have a start a year in advance. <laughs> so it's uh, becoming finalized. We're setting up three clinical sites that we're writing contracts with right now with Bravo Memorial Hospital, Thompson House, and Vernon Green, where our students can do their clinicals and they will be have to do 52 hours of clinical work also and that class will be 160 minutes long two blocks long during the spring semester so that's in the process keep your fingers crossed uh, our electronics class is currently going over different forms of energy and actually took a, a tour next door to the uh, familiar farm there to take a look at the solar panels and brought up a lot of discussions within class talking about direct current, alternating current, single phase, three phase, power, the use of inverters. So some good discussions from what they saw over at the, at the farm. Uh, today we had Amy Wyatt in from a Southern Regional Education Board in Atlanta, Georgia. She's working with my staff during these two in-service days and they're developing meaningful programs of study within their curriculum areas. Basically a path that the student would take starting in ninth grade if they wanted to go into manufacturing and engineering or forestry and natural resources. And we actually worked hand in hand with BUHS program of studies today, our attached school, to take a look at courses that were relevant for the student to take, whether English, science, math classes that would take them along that path. So it could be a very useful tool for guidance counselors and parents in the future. And they're also, she's also working with them this afternoon that she did and tomorrow, trying to pilot a senior completer, I guess we could call it level two completer project that seniors could do as they complete their programs of study. So in our level two classes, we'd like to pilot the program to have the student do a final presentation on our, our product and a process that they have designed through their work. So she's kind of guiding us through the process, what it would entail, and seeing from you know writing research papers to having a product, having a portfolio, and presenting, having a presentation. So that's been going well. We're pretty busy today. And that's all I have. Thank you. A central office. Sure. So I want to add on, SREB is an excellent organization and they, uh, and Amy in particular, is very good and we're very lucky to have her actually. When Ray and I met this summer we to schedule her, we were fortunate to have a time when she, we were open and she was able to come and work with us. Um, so she's excellent. Um, to build on Steve's a little bit, there are some faculty groups here and some groups from central office that are doing meals for the, used to be called the overflow shelter, it's now housed at what was the Austin. So um, we're really fortunate to have people that are um, willing to do community service for, for people in need in our community. Um, November 14th, we had a fall showcase organized by Michaela Sims and the Diversity Committee. We had some students from BAMS performing, as well as some students from uh, some of the elementary schools. I believe it happened at BAMS. Um, very well received. The kids were just great and seemed to really enjoy it, as did the parents. We had about 100 people. Um, I met with the Diverse work Workforce which is a community-wide organization um, looking at ways to recruit a greater variety, a greater, uh, from a greater variety of places 
and really focusing on trying to have um, more people of color, um, more minorities. Uh, so we will be doing some recruiting. Um, David Scholes uh, has been in touch with SUNY Albany. I've been looking at um, Springfield area, Springfield Mass area. So we'll be probably taking some recruiting trips there. Um, as you know, it is not easy to find teachers. <coughs> it is very, very difficult to find any um, teachers of color, but we are continuing to work on that. Um, as I said, it's a community organization because we know in order to have people come here, it has to be a welcoming community. So there have to be other jobs also for um, partners or spouses that may be coming as well. So the police force work, uh, we work with the police force, uh, the town, uh, Peter Alwell from the town, the manager's <coughs> office. Um, so we will probably try to recruit Steve to come with us on a, a recruiting trip. Probably somebody from EES, maybe at the elementary level as well. For that. Um, and a couple of dates I told you, uh, November 29th, so we've had to change the next few um, WSESU meetings. So November 29th will be the WSESU finance meeting. That will be at 6 o'clock. And September 6th, am I right about that, Russ? It's oh, that was 5.15. September 29th at 5.15, but... 29th is at 6. At 6? It is at 6. Okay. You mean November. And I do mean, did I and say September? November. It can't really be November. Thanksgiving isn't really this week. We're planning for 29th. Okay. So, okay, start again. November 29th, WSESU Finance, 6 o'clock. Where? And I believe that to be at Central Office. And then November, I wrote it down September even, um, and then December 6th is going to be the WSESU full board meeting. And that is, the location is still to be determined. So those are both moved from Wednesdays to Thursdays. So if there's a finance meeting, then I, I before I can probably make it at six, depending how far north it is, but I've got a class that ends at five in Amherst. Okay. So would it be maybe, I may be looking to you to go to a finance meeting because there's often one just before. Before the before the, before the, before the, before the before. And I suspect if this room is open, it will be here um, because this is more centrally located from, because it's a full board meeting, the everybody's coming. Yeah. So what time would that district work? I, mean, I had it down like at 5.15 yeah. uh, on, on that From Wednesday. The finance so part. The finance part. And then the full SU is at 6. That might be a little bit of a challenge. Yeah. But shortly thereafter, perhaps. Well, you let me know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's all Okay. Thank you. And as far as um, my report, just Russ mentioned it a little bit earlier, um, and I think I've talked about it some at one point over the summer at one of our meetings. I was part of a group of, from the whole district that came together to do, um, to create an evaluation tool for the superintendent and to create a job description for the superintendent because there wasn't really an updated version of the, either one of those things. And we did that, and that was the tool that we used to evaluate the superintendent this year. And there is a job description that's created. I meant to bring hard copies to give, and I forgot to do that. But I will email out that to board members so that your, any feedback that you want to give related to the job description would be great, really appreciated. And that's going to get a final approval by the WSCSU board at that December 6th meeting. So they'd like to have any feedback about the job description prior to that. So I will email that out to you either this evening or first thing in the morning to all the board members so that you have that for a couple weeks to look at um, and give me any feedback and I will forward that along to the right folks. So um, it was a good process I think um, that we went through. And I think that it I think it helped all of us to understand all the different facets because it was people from all the different towns that were there. So it was really helpful I think for all of us to hear you know, there are certain things that we at BHS 6 need Lyle to do and that the elementary schools and the, the surrounding towns 
have no desire for her to do because it's something that, that makes no sense and vice versa. So it was really, was educational I think for us in a lot of ways. So I will forward that out <coughs> either tonight or tomorrow morning so you guys all can see that. And you should reply sender only. Yes, re yes, don't reply all <laughs> with any request, just reply sender. Um, all right, that was all I had for administrative report. Um, and there's no unfinished business listed on our agenda. I don't think we have any unfinished business. Under new business, we do need to do um, a brief executive session. So um, I like a motion for, I'm gonna move that we go into executive session for a update of a student matter and with the high school principal. And Lyle, are you coming as well? And, and the superintendent. Um, and we can move into this room so the camera can can go ahead and go. We're not going to take any action at that, so we'll just adjourn after that meeting. And everybody else just can go. So thank you all very much.